Hi everyone, I'm Jason Lawler, founder of Lawler Pickups here. And I'm Mike Wool. I work in customer service at Lawler Pickups. In this video series, we're going to be talking about some of the more common questions we get from customers and breaking down how guitar electronics function. We'll also wade through years of forum fodder to sift out the truth from the myths to help you be better equipped with the information you need to choose the best components for your individual needs. Hi everyone, Mike here with Lawler Pickups. In this video, we're going to dive into the hotly debated issue of whether or not your tone capacitor material impacts your guitar sound. Now we're asked all the time about the functional differences between paper and oil, polyester or ceramic caps, which are all commonly used in electric guitar tone circuits. Like so many things in our industry, there's a lot of uncertainty, confusion and conflicting information out there, especially if you spend much time on gear forums. To better understand how a capacitor's material affects its operation, let's first dig into what a tone capacitor is doing. Now, people generally understand that a guitar's tone knob works to roll off the high frequencies as the knob turns from 10 to 1. But how exactly is this small component achieving that? Essentially, the cap creates a cutoff point at a specific frequency above which high frequencies are sent to ground. This is known as a passive tone circuit. The cutoff point is determined by the capacitor value, 0.047, 0.022 or 0.015 microfarad being the most common with guitars and basses. In a passive tone circuit, anything above the cutoff is sent to ground and is never actually heard. The higher the cap value, the wider the band of high frequencies that is being sent to ground. A 0.047 cap will send more of your highs to ground than the 0.015 cap. Each knob position from 10 to 1 will represent a greater change with the higher value cap than with a lower value where the difference is much more subtle. Now, something important to reiterate about a guitar tone circuit is that above the frequency cutoff point, no signal is going to be sent through your amp and speakers. Everything above that cutoff frequency is sent to ground and removed entirely from the signal. With that in mind, the claim that cap material would affect your tone seems a little tougher to support, being that the mechanism of action is everything below and nothing above the cutoff point. No audible signal is passing through the cap unless it's on its way to ground and therefore completely removed from your signal. So, in today's video, we've come up with an experiment to see if and how these different materials can have an appreciable effect on a guitar signal and to what degree. At first, we thought we'd simply compare three popular caps. In no particular order, bumblebee paper and oil, as well as mustard cap and orange drop film and foil capacitors. We planned to do so by installing one in a guitar, recording, and then swapping it out for the next cap and repeating the process. But then we realized that small variables like pick attack or our studio amps continuing to heat up can have an effect on our results. So how can we further eliminate variables? The solution we came up with provides a workaround for these concerns. For this demo, we thought that by recording the guitar signal direct and using a technique called reamping, we could send it through the various tone caps. This way, we could control for variation in playing as we'd be sending the same exact recording through a different cap each time. When recording the direct guitar track, we're going to bypass the guitar's tone controls entirely so as to eliminate any coloration in the recording process. Then, we'll use a Line 6 HX stomp as a DI and recording interface with no effects or modeling in the signal chain into PreSonus's Studio One recording software. We'll then take the recorded DI track and send it back to the HX stomp with the send and return blocks used as an insert for guitar tone controls and amp cab modeling for real world tone so that it actually resembles a guitar sound rather than a sterile DI track. From the HX stomp, we send the signal out of the effects send into a Radial Pro DI, which is run in reverse to correct for instrument levels. From the DI, we are running into this little unassuming box. While it may look like our typical product packaging box, we've actually mounted three discrete tone circuits in here. A 250k pot like you might find on a Strat or Tele, along with a three-way switch and three different tone caps with closely matched values, each wired to a different switch position. From there, we use the effects return to send the signal back into the HX stomp before going through the amp, speaker, and mic modeling. For our clean, we're using a Fender Deluxe Vibrato 112 amp and speaker models with an SM57 mic model. For the dirty sound, we're running with a Centaur Overdrive into a dimed Vox AC30 212 amp and speaker models with an SM57 mic model. These signals will then be sent back in a PreSonus Studio One with each cap on its own track. There are no other effects used in tracking or post-production. Now, we want to address the concern that this is not a real-world example. 
aside from the fact that many professionals use these same amp modeling and reamping methods on stage and in the studio, still, many of us at the shop are also tube amp purists and understand why a player might be skeptical. But keep in mind that what we're trying to do here is eliminate as many variables as possible. By recording a sample of some guitar playing only once and reamping it digitally, we can control for any variation between amplifier response or playing style. Sending that same signal three times through our three different caps allows us a controlled method to hear only the effects, if any, of the tone caps in our tone switching box. This, in turn, will allow us to get some frame of reference for how they affect the signal. This method allows us to have the most consistent recordings each time, since not only are the variables removed, but so too are any unnecessary analog to digital or digital to analog conversion, even in the reamping process. And one last note before we start. To best avoid confirmation bias, we're not going to identify which cap is which until later. That will help us be as neutral as possible in our assessment. We're just as curious about the results as we imagine many of you are, so let's not delay any further. We've wired the bridge pickup directly to the output jack, totally bypassing volume, tone, and selector controls, so they have absolutely no effect on the signal whatsoever. Now, let's reamp that DI track. That way, we can give each of the three different capacitors its own track, both clean and dirty, in Studio One for our comparative references. With that done, let's listen for the differences between the three types.
Very interesting. Now that we've heard them as neutral observers, we can reveal which cap is which. You had probably already made up your mind about which you liked best. Did that match your expectations? Could you even hear an appreciable difference? How does your opinion change going back and listening again, knowing which cap is which? Now, it's not our intention to prove anything in this video, but to provide players with a controlled frame of reference to make their own decisions. There will no doubt be some viewers who come away from this video doubling down on their opinions, some who will be surprised and might change their minds, and some who might even retroactively change their minds about what they heard after they found out which cap was which to confirm their preconceived notions. You know who you are, but that's all okay. Ultimately, guitar tone is entirely subjective. While we can control for variables in the instrument and signal chain, there's no controlling for variations in taste, anatomy and sensory acuity, or listening environment. At the end of the day, remember, the only correct component, instrument, or amp for you is the one that you like the best. Perception really does make reality when it comes to instruments. As always, thank you for taking the time to ride along with us. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you've learned something along the way that'll help you get closer to the sounds you hear in your head. You can find more videos like this one in our Tone Truth YouTube playlist. If you find this information useful, or at least mildly entertaining, and you'd like to be kept in the know when we release future videos, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. And of course, if you have questions about anything we make or sell, don't hesitate to reach out to our customer service team at the email or phone number you see on your screen. Thanks again, everybody.